Well, the fact that it is crowded and there is no place, it was always clear. Asceticism? No, simplicity. For you to understand, a radio was already included as standard here. But the truth is, it disappeared somewhere. In the West, this equipment was called deluxe, and for Soviet citizens it was available to everyone. Of course, the finishing materials here are simple, there are no fabric inserts, leatherette is everywhere, but it's more functional, it's easier to wash. Tidy small and noticeably lopsided from the sun in time. There are two levers on the floor, a gear shift and a handout handle. One, for you to understand, it includes the bridge and lowering. But other manufacturers have come to this recently, and we have 1959, so you understand. And everything that you see in front of you is not bad taste, as you thought, this is tuning, Soviet, from improvised materials. Washer bottle. Watch. Do you know where this watch comes from? How beautifully they fit. What do we have here that is interesting? Below we see a special iron bar so that the already bad looking instrument panel does not deteriorate further. Stove. There will be a separate story about it, this is a masterpiece. And the fan. Voranezits. Incidentally, this car has been operated by the owner until recently. Imagine? As you probably already know, the end of the 50s and the beginning of the 60s was a breakthrough period for the USSR, in all areas, space, Gagarin, the atom, and of course, new cars were produced. Moskvich, Volga, Chaika, Zaporozets, but everything somehow did not suit the inhabitants of the village. Nonsense, said the chief collective farmer of the USSR comrade Khrushchev, and the Soviet automobile enterprises began to think what to do. There was a GAZ-69, but it often carried the military. There was also a Gaz M72 model, comfortable, but too expensive. Everything was not right, a golden mean was needed. GAZ stepped in and developed the M73, small, economical, and inexpensive to manufacture. But there was no capacity at the Gorky plant, how else to do it? They collected all the already created documents and sent them to MZMA in Moscow. And on Moskvich, they already made a very successful car, Moskvich 402, and it became the first experimental one. And then the 407, an improved version with a more powerful motor, which had a station wagon version, the 423. And here it is, in front of you is exactly the same wagon, and as I like to say, tired, but not defeated. To understand the uniqueness of the moment, there were no such machines in large-scale production. MZMA earned currency by producing Moskvich 407 for foreign countries, so a total of 1,515 copies of all-wheel drive were made. A few words about appearance. Yes, you are right. Outwardly the car echoes the 21st Volga. There are two explanations. First, because engineers from Nizhny Novgorod took part in the creation of this car. Secondly, this is a mandatory unified design style of that time for all goods from the USSR, from clothespins to spaceships. So, 1958 is in full swing, an ordinary Soviet citizen has not yet received an all-wheel drive station wagon for private use right away. After all, the machine was supposed, first of all, to facilitate the work of chairmen, directors of machine and transport stations and repairmen, and only then rural residents in general. But some copies of the novelty still fell to ordinary rural citizens. I already hear the howling of experts, they say, the chairman drove the 69th model. Yes, they did. But does one rule out the other? In addition, the 11th is more functional. Let's open the back door, and here is exactly the door, door that opens to the side.
Of course, not the largest compartment, but everything is finished with painted iron. Under the floor. Yes, it is under the floor, not a piece of bio garbage that a full-size spare wheel is hiding. The back sofa also develops. The mechanism is not the easiest, but simple and reliable. Another interesting element of Soviet tuning, here is such a holder for a subnumber bar, which at the same time is a lid for the gas tank cap. How often do you see this? Someone says that the gas tank in the stern is very convenient, because the driver can drive up to the gas station from any direction. But there is a flip side of the coin, and you can clearly more in the gas tank at the back. Did you think about security before writing comments? And here we see a completely flat, strong floor. The back is also metal. And now a fact that has been proven over the years. With 550 pounds of cargo and two tough guys, this car can easily carry. And let's move on to the chassis, because this is an all-wheel drive car, the prototype of modern crossovers. And Neva, in fact, was not the first, because there is also no frame here, but there are springs, both in front and behind. To cram all the machinery, the designers had to change the front part of the Moskvich, the subframe, front mudguards, and also play a trick with the tunnel. Let's take a look at the bottom of the car together, can you see that? And you don't see anything. It's me that neither the box, nor the transfer case, and practically no muffler stick out. Which means what? I'll give you time to think that there is nothing to cling to. The rear axle was hung under the springs to increase ground clearance, and not above, as on the 407th. In general, the entire chassis design resembles a miniature GAZ69 in layout. Motor, cardan shaft, transfer case, rear axle. But everything is native, from our favorite Moscow plant. The front has steering knuckles. And again, the old wrecks present us with gorgeous surprises. In short, if you wish, you can turn off the front axle by removing the slotted plugs and putting the usual ones. And it is recommended to do this when driving on a tarmac road. And now another interesting and at the same time strange moment. There are weights inside the fists, but not like we are used to, they are more like... Like these, folded iron palms, between which there are balls. That is, if explaining very primitively, it actually visually resembles some kind of crosses. But these are not crosses. I hope I have explained clearly. If not, please explain in the comments. And yet, there are no shock absorbers, familiar to us, here they are lever, such as on the GAZ-69, differed only in pause. Now telescopic shock absorbers have been installed here, which means that progress has reached the collective farm. The entire chassis was made at MZMA, it is original, from Moskvich. There is even a gearbox, in my opinion, from the 402nd Moskvich. Until we went far, or rather, until we left on this beast, the engine is from the 407th. Do you see this bug? This is the same masterpiece of folk art, but about it a little later. And to the main thing, to the heart of this apparatus, the motor is completely ordinary, you must have heard about it from me many times, also from the serial 407th, 4-cylinder, gasoline, carbureted, 4-stroke, 82 cubic inches, 45 horsepower at 4,500 rpm, torque 86.3 newton meters at 2,400 rpm. Modestly, of course, but the designers here changed the crankcase, it is deeper, and the oil intake has become a little different. This is done so that the oil does not drain on the slopes and the engine does not have starvation. Yes, I promised to tell you about the inventions of folk art. So, now about the ingenious do-it-yourselfers. The car is northern, from a city called Kirov, and it was necessary to make sure that there was heat in the cabin. And we went along a very elegant path, removed our own fan, which is not here, and made a kind of turbine that pumps in the rotor, which pumps hot air, respectively, through the radiator, does not let it go towards the motor, scrolls through the casing with these blades, and hot air passes through the stove of the cabin and there it is even more broken up into the fan already built into the stove. I think I explained correctly.
Winter is coming, you need to change your tires. But the tires here are not simple, but special. Vyacheslav, the owner of the car, even got a real, rare one made in the USSR for this. M51. Produced at the Moscow tire plant. So that you understand, the protector, well, the truth is such, shabby with life, but it will look much more textured. Aluminum fenders. By the way, it is interesting that if you look closely, you will see that they are sewn to the wing with iron wire. Already write in the comments yes, sewn, sewn, certainly not sewn on. It was a joke, you know? Everything is very technologically done. It was a spare. Time is merciless. Too bad I can't vulcanize wheels with the laying on of my hands. What can I say about feelings? It's pretty interesting. The car is clumsy in motion, and unusual in comparison with the Moskvich dad. And you also feel that height, in corners the feeling that we will soon lie on our side if we go faster does not leave. But it doesn't work out faster, because neither I nor the car want to. The maximum speed of the Moskvich 411 is 52 miles per hour. But no. The consumption written in the smart book is a little over 4 gallons per 100 miles at a speed of 30 miles per hour. Indeed, it is very convenient to maneuver on this jalopy. See for yourself. In stream and between bushes, but it is not convenient to turn around due to the front axle, the radius has grown. The steering wheel here is from the 406, and the steering gear is from Pobita, and the entire steering assembly was redrawn due to the leading limber. I already told you about tightness, didn't I? Told. But about the brakes, no. They are drums, in a circle. But in principle, they are not needed here. You just let go of the gas pedal. And that's it, the car stopped, it will not coast at all. It's a 4-speed gearbox. Of course, this is better than the 3-speed. How do you like this logic? But still, I have mixed feelings about driving this car. On the one hand, I know that the 407th and 402nd Moskvichs are quite comfortable cars for their time. We can even say that these are some of the best domestic representatives of the automotive industry. And here the car drives like something unfinished, that is, it does not have the comfort. The comfort of movement of the 407th but at the same time, the nervousness of the 69th. And of course, the turning radius, I'll tell you, dear editors. You just can't turn around like that. With familiar ease. For speeds, and here more is not needed. 
Still, the cars are designed for dirt roads and snow-covered tracks. And in conjunction with the evil rubber, and here it is the real, native one, it is not bad at all. It does not like slopes, because of the high center of gravity. But with a rise of up to 25 degrees in a Ford, up to half a meter deep, it will definitely cope. Maybe more, but in another life. Also, the ground clearance is 8.6 inches. It is only interesting how, with such a weak motor, the car rose successfully? The designers played around with gear ratios, and you know, they, in principle, succeeded. And after all, the most important thing here is not that it does not stall, but that it does not break. And you know, as usual, at first they install an engine with a volume of many cubic inches, and then they are surprised. Why did the bridges break? Why did the transfer case fall off in a puddle? The cons of the 411 and its relatives were visible to the naked eye, in the truest sense of the word. The bodies could not withstand the loads and burst, which is clearly seen in the numerous welded places. They were prone to capsizing. The remaining disadvantages are like all cars of that period, including foreign ones. The age of all-wheel drive Moskvichs was not long. In 1961, they were officially taken out of production, but in fact, they were not produced already in the 60th. As I said, MZMA was busy with other things, and there was not enough capacity. What can I say, a good idea that did not receive a logical continuation, but it's a pity. All good things are covered with the ashes of time. And I'll blow it away. And the hunt continues.